Hey there, welcome back to PowerShell Garage. Today we're working on installing the oil pan and heads on the 6 liter LQ4 LS engine that'll be going into Alex's 1972 Chevy C10 pickup. Enjoy! Alright, first thing we're going to do today is get this oil pan on so I can put the heads on next. I want to leave the oil pan off as long as possible in case I decided to drop something in the block, but I think we're past that stage. I don't want to have to keep flipping this over. So we're going to get the gasket surface cleaned up, put the new gasket and pan on. Well, old pan, new gasket, and we'll move on to the heads. Again, this is uh, not a training guide for someone else who knows what they're doing. This is just what I'm doing for my engine. I'm definitely not a professional. I'm not a mechanic by trade. I'm just a guy who knows how to use Google.com and can learn from others' experiences. And their forum posts, which are very helpful, by the way. Not always true and accurate, but once you sift through them, you find some good information. Of course, this back area is a little tricky because somebody put the flywheel on already. I don't know who. surface nice and clean so the gasket will get a good seal. No transmission fluid sitting around. After I washed the engine and covered all the gasket material or all the gasket surfaces in the transmission fluid to clean them and prevent rust. Here's my new painting gasket. This is uh yep Oh, this one's from Speedway Motors, so there's no brand listed per se. It's a Speedway brand gasket. They usually rebrand things that they have made by bigger makers, and they just take their name off of them. It's not a no-name brand. It's just no-name on the package brand. And it's a little bit, you know, curved. That's all right. Straighten it out a little bit. They get bent in packaging because they're made out of aluminum. They're very easy to bend and easy to straighten. You want to get this in place and Make sure everything is lining up and it feels like it's going to seal correctly. This one kind of seems like it's hitting the, the windage tray, windage tray, however you say that, in the back here. So you may need to loosen this hardware and move this tray over slightly. There's a little bit of play in it. It's because it is going to contact the gasket right here. Let's take care of that. Tell us truck engines, everything is metric. Metric fasteners. foot pounds. Oh. This is still our stock LQ4 truck pan off of a Silverado. Oh. 
you know, just going to clean up these gasket surfaces quickly. One of the few places, and I mean few places, on an LS that you need RTV, it's here. Don't be like me and uh, put your RTV on before you put the pan on, instead of the after. All right, according to the old forums, the next thing you want to do is put a dab of RTB at each of these intersection corners. These Felpro gaskets stick up slightly from these spaces. I'm going to put the pan on for the second time, this time with the RTV. The first one was just a, was just a practice round. Okay, here's the oil pan complete torqued down. We got our Wix oil filter on. Also threw on this ICT billet plate that covers up the oil cooler ports. It has an eighth inch NPT adapter in it. I got a gauge here, just, just for oil priming. This will eventually hook to the factory gauge on the C10. But for now, we'll at least be able to see where our pressure is when we're priming. Filters on, oil pans on and torqued. Drain plugs torqued. Little temperature sensor thing that probably doesn't work. I'm sorry, level sensor is on. At this point, I'm ready to put a head on. Plus, uh, now you have a gauge you can hit your knee on. So. Nice. Yes, <laughs> that's definitely going to happen. I wonder if I'll rip it off when I hit it hard enough. Heck. <laughs> All right, I think we got our block ready for the head gaskets, heads. Get the little alignment pins in. Have some BTR. LS9 head gaskets. They are marked front for front. Logically so. Or are they trying to confuse you and that's the front of the gasket? <laughs> but where's the front of the gasket go? Does it go to the front of the motor or does it go to the back of the motor? Front of your motor is where the you know, your crank pulley is, your balancer. Back of the motor is where your flex plate is. Front to front. This weird writing that says 92L, also on the back, apparently. And they say Germany on them. So like I said before, this is a six liter LQ4 engine from a Silverado 2500 HD. These are 706 stamped heads from a 5.3 engine in the same era. Uh, essentially, running the 5.3 heads gives you about an extra point of compression because they're smaller CC chambers. 
and they don't flow quite as well, but apparently it doesn't matter. Still get a pretty decent power increase from running that. Again, I've cleaned the block, cleaned the head, just doing quick visual inspection, make sure something else hanging out, no grease, nothing weird. Need to hit these alignment pins with the head and it should set right down on the block. And the blade's clean. If you're looking for your head bolts, they're right here on the engine stand. <laughs> right where you left them. Got some uh, retiree bolts here from ARP. If you fellers are 50 year older, sign up for ARP. Get free bolts. I made that up. We're gonna have to read some instructions here with these ARPs. They got directions, they got lubricants. Washers, bolt. I mean, what's, there's just all kinds of stuff in here. We'll be back. Let's read the directions. There we go. There we go. All right. According to the ARP instructions, we're to clean the washers, and then with a well, but not very free rider. <laughs> The directions say that you take these washers and set them on the bolt holes ahead of time with the chamfer side facing up. And again, this is for the ARP kit. Now that's really easy to do out here for these five. Well, the tricky part is doing the ones inside of here because there's channels on each side of the bolt holes they go down to the oil returns in the block. And if you drop a washer in there, it's going straight to the oil. So I'm gonna double check the direction of these. Because you can check for the both sides technically. A little bit. The directions do say that the inner diameter chamfer of the washer faces the bolt out. So inside the washer, there's the chamfer on the inside, so inner diameter chamfer that faces the bolt head, therefore it faces up. I'm going to use a screwdriver to line the bolt hole and drop the washer down in there without throwing it down into the oil returns and losing it forever and having to take the oil pan off again. All right, the next thing we're gonna do after that is I'm gonna install the two outer bolts on the older Gen 3 LS engines. The two outer bolts on the heads are shorter. It doesn't have to do with the head, it has to do with how the block is designed. So no matter what heads you put on, you put newer heads, doesn't matter. The bolt holes in the block are not as long on the older ones. So you have to use a shorter bolt. The newer engines use all these shorter bolts. The older engines use three long ones in the center and five watt ones, long ones on the outside. Uh, so for the ARP bolts, like I said, the two outer ones, or the two shorter ones go on the outside, the longer ones go everywhere else, the three in the center and then the five across the bottom. It's just in the center row, the outside ones are shorter on the older LS. So you take your ARP lube, lube up the threads of the bolt itself, making a big mess, and lubricate the bottom side of the head, like so. I'm not doing it correctly. You should also like read the ARP lube instructions and not follow what I'm doing because I read the instructions for five seconds and now you're trying to tell you how to do it. The way the ARP system is designed is that the washer is not supposed to turn. So the washer, there's no lubricant on the bottom of the washer and there's no lubricant on the head. The washer stays still, the lubricant on the bottom of the bolt keeps that turning and the washer staying still. When you're tightening these down, if you see the washer turning, your torque spec may be wrong. So back it off, Make sure you're totally clean on the bottom side of that washer. Make sure the top of the washer, bottom of the head is lubricated. 
And uh, another trick I've seen people do is they actually sand the bottom of the washer to make it more rough. So take like a 120 grit, 180 grit sandpaper, sand the bottom of the washer, put it back on the head, and that gives it a bite in the aluminum so the washer stays still. Proceeding with the bolts, we're just going to put the long ones in for now. Worry about these little tiny ones on the top once these are done and torqued. The pattern has you do those ones last. Again, try not to lose those washers down in there because they'll be taking the pan back off. Just, just go ahead and drop them. Just do it for the fans. No, no, no. They're already done. I got them. I don't want to take the pan off again. I don't have any fans. Nobody likes me. Tell you what, I'll drop one of these powder ones for you. How's that work? If we get 10 subscribers from this video, <laughs> we will drop a random watcher. <laughs> We get to know the whole. If I get 10 million views, I'll eat a washer. I'm just kidding. Don't put that in the video. 10 million views? I probably would eat a washer. There you go. 10 million views. <laughs> He'll eat a washer. As long as it's small enough and isn't sharp. <laughs> Under the direction of a medical professional, of course. This is still recording. Seven minutes left. We'll stop and restart it here. <clears throat> I'm just going to quickly run all these down. I'm just going to use this little impact just to get all the bolts down. I'm not going to put any kind of torque on them. I'm just going to get them down from the head. I swear I cleaned the brands. They're probably rusty. You really, really think you just didn't chase the, the threads? I did. Oh, you did? Okay. <clears throat> That is awfully tight. Oh, it's way too tight. Long bolts? Should be. Can't be. Well, it's just running to all the crud. Well, to rechase these outer ones. back from ARP. Of course I'm doing this upside down so hopefully you guys can see a little bit better. But we're going to go through a round on 25, 50, and then 75. So three rounds. And we're, this is just a digital torque wrench so we're just going on until we get a solid beep. 
We're gonna follow the pattern provided by ARP. I think it's the same as GM. They're all signed to 25, then we're going to jump up to 50, do the same exact thing. <laughs> Round 3 is 75. Titan bolts, one through 10, 75 foot pounds, step three. So this is the one where we're gonna wanna watch those washers and make sure they're not rotating on us. So try to get myself up here where I can see, go through the same pattern. I'm just gonna watch, see if that washer's turning, if it's staying still. <phone rings> 75. You can see that the paint is cracking from the pressure, but it's not turning or ripping since the washer's staying still. It's still cracking the paint and pulling it apart, but it's not sending it in a spiral or out all over the place, which is, that's what we're looking for, right? That washer to stay still. I'm just going to run through one more time and just double check there at 75. There you go. There's your main 10 bolts. Next thing you'll do is you run the, the row that's up here on my side. It's 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. And those are only getting torqued to 25 foot pounds. They don't do much in the cylinder ceiling, they just do oil return ceiling up on the top there and you, know, you don't want to leave them out but they're not quite as important and then we got those last roll of bolts I've already got them mostly bottom out here it's the same procedure they're just a 10 mil instead of a 13.
and we're just going to do one pass. All these are going to go down to 25. It's 11, 12, this is 13 here. This one's 14. And 15. I'm just gonna double check them. I'm LCD. And zip through your hood bolts. The last thing that I even hung on here is I had to loosen this rear coolant bypass. They always recommend online that you put a new seal on here. I did get some new seals on Amazon. So that's already in there. I'm just going to torque this back down. I'll pull those out of the way. And this one's just going into aluminum. So there's probably a torque spec here, but. I don't know what it is. If I had to guess, I'd guess it's probably the same as your oil pan, which is 106 inch pounds, because it's a 10 mil bolt going into aluminum. I think they're pretty consistent with their fastener types. There we go. It's already at 106 inch pounds. So this head, other than the valve cover and the valve train, is on. We'll do the other head and we'll come back and work on the valve train. You got the driver side head on as well. Bolts are just dropped into place. I'm just gonna go ahead and run those down really quick. And I'll move through our torque sequence. We should have two complete heads. I don't know what the sequence is. I'm just putting them in. Get my ARP cheat sheet here. All right, we're gonna go one round, it's 25, 50, and then 75. I don't think that we forgot anything yet. Or remember later. After the head bolted down. Oh, you know that. Uh, oops. Head gaskets are optional, right? Yeah, I mean, we were just gonna run this build with no gaskets. I heard you just uh, lap the metal surfaces and it's a way better seal than using those stupid gaskets. Plus you get way more compression out of gaskets. I do not remember how thick these gaskets are. Like I said, they're the Brian, Brian Tooley Racing LS9 gaskets. I remember that our compression was going to be, I think, 10, 7 to 1 using these gaskets, but I don't remember what their thickness was. All right, we're going back through, this time on 50. Same process. You go on the 50 pass, you're getting a decent amount of head gasket crush. And as you get to the last bolt, it's loose enough. All right, here we go, last round on 75, and then we'll still run through and check them just to be safe. That's crunchy. 
see. Well, that was the socket blowing apart. Not this time. We did have that happen with the uh, main bolts. We're using a half inch deep set 13 mil socket and it cracked doing the main bolts on the, uh, like the 50 degree torque pass, 51 degree torque pass. It blew up by halfway through that pass. I think we're getting some crunching now just because these holes have rust in them. After it was hot tank, they got a little bit rusty. We went through and chased them out again and blew them out. And of course we greased the fasteners, but just a little bit of powder in those holes still. Double check them. All right, that's it for those. We'll do the top row at 25. And I said done also. All right, we dropped in these last row of bolts. I'm going to get those run down. We'll get those torqued as well. Okay, these are 25, according to ARP, all in their bolt pattern, or their tightening pattern, I guess the way to say that. Caught that on camera, didn't we? It's okay when you have your faster. So they're meant to be like stripped a couple times. <laughs> and the last thing we got is just to get this little coolant plug put back on. I'm not using the back bypass on this vehicle. We're just gonna run the front bypass and we're just gonna use the factory one for that. Um, the engine is gonna be tipped up in the frame so this one will be high and like I said it's going to be connected with the factory piece so we're just going to stick to that configuration and blank these off and that should be good to go ready to assemble valve frame. <laughs>